Pi. Well, we set, set up the one at this point. The one you're in right now is just give one to talk about Raspberry Pi. <laughs> I think we, we did really well. Yeah, I People want to build a robot. Do you think we to build a robot with a Raspberry Pi? I have nowhere to put it. Nowhere to put it. I can build another one that's not so stupidly heavy. <laughs> what is cool, cool but it's heavy? I was going to say, like Ben Franklin using that Raspberry Pi robots. Or like a. I want to get out of air gel. I don't have a gel. I could. Uh, well. These two are hooked up like one battery, so it's like a 12 volt battery. Yeah, so let's stick a when I had the 12 volt battery right in the center, as is. it would pop wheelies all the time. And by moving the mass okay. out for the ends, it's now stable. So, who has an idea of how we might build a lighter one? Seriously. What would you do to build a lighter at the robot? Yeah, ones are 6 volts. Yeah, so less so less so 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 what you do is well, you build your robot on. There's aluminum. Um, that's well, aluminum? Or, yeah. uh, no, we use for ice and for for our frames, we would use aluminum, not too big. It's a thin This is an undescribed. Wait, you can do it in But it's extruded aluminum, but that has screw connectors connect together. So it goes together like an erector system. So, you mean like, are you talking about an E20 drill? I think so. Okay, yeah, that's a great one. I'm a programming guy in the digital big. The engineers have to take it later, so I kind of did that on the it looked like yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people, um, like master students want to uh, assemble like, projects, which is very sensor rage, just because they need to hold up the three million dollars. Sorry, and they can't take the time to design um, actual systems. So, there's that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> What else are we going to build here? Anybody? The big red button here. Here's all the motors. So you need a battery, you need motors, you need a box. What else do I need to make a robot? Uh, CPU, programming language. I was thinking that. Okay, so we've got a Raspberry Pi, right? Well, see, that's where, because I walked in here, I, I, I learned about Raspberry Pi five minutes ago, so um, <laughs> I didn't even know it existed. I, 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 when I read the thing, I assumed it was a programming language. So I came in just to hear what's going on. Oh. <laughs> now I'm curious, what's, what do the inputs and outputs look like? What's it got? You want to see one? Yeah, there's yeah. one right there. Right there. Woo. Right there. Right there. Right there. I think if you're being That's more it. ambitious, you might want to cut the size, like one for this. This is your local computer. computer. You want to All right. Where's the guy? I don't know. I'm not there. Network. I'm brand new. USB. I don't know what those are. RCA and video okay. out. Okay. Audio out. Oh, all right. HDMI. These are uh, CSI and MPI for camera and display. That's what they know. The camera one is not in the camera. They have a very small dietary from the display. I'm sorry, the camera is made, the display is a display. There's a site and there's like a legend down there. You have several little pieces of the camera running in the camera. There's also it's all powered via five volts on this speed connector. It is not on the video, but it's just powerful. And your operating system is run. So I like the last couple of times. I would like friends. It's 512 megs of memory. The ARM core is more than my ARM core. It's a GPU ARM. 
here is stinking fast. We're really? talking 1080p encode decode fast. Right. Well, so put a camera on it. Just hook up a USB camera. What, what's, it, what's it in the ballpark of? Uh, it's an open It's not open oh, okay. It's not anything. Uh, it, it's generic GPU. Oh, all right. Uh, all right. And actually, they finally released some open source drivers for the actual hardware. It used to be a binary firmware block that ran itself and actually exported an OpenGL interface directly to the kernel, which was kind of uh, disappointing. But so, so the CPU on this, how, how powerful is it? I mean, if you want to compare that to an old laptop, is that turn of the century, a turn of the century PC? That ain't bad. Well, it's, it's a for, for a robot. That ain't bad. RV6. RV6. So. With, with the optional hardware floating point unit, okay. which is the annoying part because the RG6 architecture only had uh, the hardware floating point unit as an option in the processor. Uh. And it's why most of the distros have decided they're supporting RMV7 hard floating point because the hard floating point unit is mandatory. Uh. Although they're using uh, only 16 floating point registers because 16 and 32 registers was the optional part in these. <laughs> Um, <coughs> but what, but wasn't, it, wasn't it originally the chip that was used to like the first Android phone? The G1? Was it a V6? Uh, it might have been the same architecture, it's definitely not this chip. Okay, well, five years later on. I just, I know I've been really surprised at how powerful it is. It doesn't quite handle some stuff. Um, I try hand running things like Google Docs and stuff on it, and it bogs bad if they're issue, on special spreadsheets. But there's an easy workaround for it. Because it works brilliantly with LTSB as a terminal server client. Yes, that's because you you moved where the computation is. Uh, right. Is right. Okay. So for those that what don't know, for sixty bucks on a screen, you can populate an entire uh, classroom. Absolutely. It's, uh, right. So I just got an LTSB. You might want to explain uh, that. Linux terminal server. So, so essentially, it's a little tiny box that emulates the host machine and desktop. Yeah, and provides a separate, separate environment for each of you to work in because your IT has their own account and you need to So if anybody wants to learn more about that, go to mug.org, the local club run by Jim McQuillan, the president who created LTSP. Really? Yes. That's local? Yes. Now there's a weekend. Oh, really? Just from the end. And I don't know if I'm then How is that processor in your case? Just of the record talk about it. So what else do we use our Raspberry Pi for? Has anybody forgotten to tell us about something? Or? Mine's a printer. <laughs> a printer? Okay, well, so that's a year here in the No, no, I can't wait. Uh, so, so did you code the, code the distro yourself, or what are you using as a printer? I'm using Fedora 18. Uh, specifically, uh, they called it Pydora, although there's a bug request to change the name. Really? Uh, apparently in Russia it's very derogatory. <laughs> okay. That's a feature. The <laughs> recent thread, <laughs> both points are arguing. Well, so I heard of someone using it as a weather station, you know, basically throwing up a bunch of sensors in the house and using that and then being able to access that from remotely so they can find out what the weather is at their home. Okay, and then I saw also like videos out there. There was an interesting video with a, a father with his two sons building an uh, interface for a remote control car. And so they, the kids write a program in Scratch to tell if the car goes right or left and that type of thing. So what other, so, how about a musical uh, yeah, musical yeah, tree? Yeah, you touch the tree, it makes a different there, noise based so on where you touch it. What else? Well, everybody's it's possible to make a theremin out of it. I just thought of it. A what? A theremin? A theremin. 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 It's an old oh, musical instrument. Yeah, so it basically <laughs> uses a magnetic field that from a coil, and you place your hand in it, and it disrupts uh -huh. the sound signal so you can move your hand in there. Uh -huh. Air, it was basically a precursor to the synthesizer. Remember Finn Planet? As well as uh, uh, Star Trek. They've actually the had them at previous yes. Pegacons, right? That's the, that's the musical instrument they used to make the soundtrack for Forbidden Planet. It's the only instrument you play without touching it. Oh, that's interesting. You have to have perfect pitch to play it. 
Oh, well, the theorem's fine. Right there. And the thing is, like, you don't really have a point of reference, though. Like, you're moving your hands in midair, and just, oh, this is a C, like, vaguely in this area. Yeah. This that's that's why you have to have perfect pitch to play. What, what is this again? A theorem. Theorem? theorem? Uh -huh. How do you spell that? T-H-E-R-M-I-N. So I spell it W-R-O-N-G, the same way I spell everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a theorem is. It's the thing that makes the noise in every sci-fi movie. Yeah. Well, so the, the, you attach that to a Raspberry Pi, right? Is that what you're... So I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there as an idea. You know, that could be something that you could do. Like, I saw one project where you can use some of the pinouts to actually make the uh, Raspberry Pi broadcast on the FM spectrum. Um, like, yeah, they, they, they bit-banged one of the uh, GPIO pins fast enough to generate a uh, reasonable 7-bit audio stream. Um, it, well, not very great, but it is, uh, I think they ran that in C to get it to go fast enough to toggle the pin, but it was quite impressive to see. Um, so a serial radio station, is that right? Serial pin, right? Uh, general uh, input-output pin, and they were literally just turning it on and off fast enough to approximate the waveform, uh, which emits out of the wire and into the air. <laughs> and yes, you could dial your FM radio to it and <laughs> listen to it. That's that's the essence of software defined radio right there. Yeah. One of the other things is it's nice for uh, multi room audio because it's really cheap. You can throw some speakers on it um, and just run it up in multiple rooms uh, and sh share your music around. Well, so there was a guy in our uh, MD Lug, MD Lug dot org, uh, another local group who came in and he showed off this multimedia system, you know, where you could do like the sharing all the devices and then he had it all hooked up so that it would pull the music and the, and the videos from off the internet and the you know, whole control of his entire uh, video stream. Uh, what was it that you called? You just said MD Lord? MD LUG, Metro, Metro Detroit, Detroit Linux, Linux user, user Group. I got a paper on it in here. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. I borrowed the website. We got our five minutes. I'm going to post a paper. Yeah, um, have any of you guys worked on making Raspberry Pi mobile? Like, I heard like you can't just strap like a uh, double battery pack. Like, you have to have like a voltage converter or something. Um, to like bounce out the... You need 5.5 volts, so it's... You're going to have to have it's still batteries like this. That work pretty well. This is like, it's just... Uh, this one's a crap. Anybody else? Like, pass it around. So, to answer your question... Like USB kind of any any USB charging cap will do you just fine because it's it's proper regulated five volts. The problem with the uh, AA battery packs is you need to regulate the volts back to five volts, as as it's, it, the Pi is expecting regulated five volts. It's not tolerant uh, to swings in input voltage. This was like twenty bucks, but if you go on Amazon, you can find like USB battery packs for like twenty fifty. They, they sell them by the uh, microamp or milliamp yeah, yeah, yeah. hour. Yeah. Okay. They, they come up in the new egg shell shocker that's pretty often too. Yeah. But they're pretty cool because like as long as you don't want the one thing that, that I found with the pi that's really sensitive is as long as you don't want to hook up hook connect everything into the world to it like if you don't want to connect a mouse and a keyboard and a hub and a something and a something <laughs> yeah. and then put a battery on it it just won't boom because there's too much power draw. Mm -hmm. If you hook up the Pi for the battery and maybe a, a keyboard and mouse and maybe a monitor, it'll probably boot up. Okay. But at a certain point, you'll probably want to do that. So if you're going to go mobile, you'll probably want it to be like yeah, that the bare minimum connecting so thing. Well, so I have a power source for uh, my boot out of the sun. Well, yeah. so, so you may want an external power pump or something like that. You may need like a different yeah. battery form or something. Okay. So yeah, I've you know, used a, um, a powered hub, yeah. right? So a powered USB hub. Now then you just get one of these inverters on your in your car and plug it into the cigarette lighter. Now you have yeah. enough power to run that. Um, the other thing, is, yes, the two USB ports on it is limiting, but I find uh, the Logitech K400. It's a, a wireless combo keyboard and trackpad. You usually find it up for about 40 bucks. 
uh, and this thing is gorgeous. USB plug and play on any device just works, and I'm a year in and still on the same pair of double A's it shipped with. Well, so I've got a um, solar powered wireless keyboard. And that works really well too. Those tend to be a bit bulkier. This one is actually yeah, right. uh, more laptops is sized, uh, very convenient to carry, yeah. uh, and great great companion for the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I've seen like a bunch of really tiny ones, like maybe like yay big, like it has a little touchpad attached to it. This one is at least full size, and you've got the two finger uh, touch uh, trackpad right on the side. Or you can just go for the mobile where it carries you instead of you carrying it. <laughs> then you can get by with the $5 full size keyboard. I got, I got that exact same keyboard for $1. Yeah, they had a dollar for a while. Oh, yeah, I can buy some more of them. Okay, and well, I think we're, cool. we're pretty much out of time. Uh, Thank you. So, you know, basically, there's another Raspberry Pi thing, which is the Raspberry Pi hacks thing. I think that someone else was doing as we, you know, began. Yeah, Raspberry Pi hacks were the two people that were running. Right, this right. Before. So that that's a, that sounds pretty cool too. I mean, we had a really good turnout here. This is there seems to be a lot of interest in this. There's a couple other things going on here about Raspberry Pi. So, cool. Thank you all. Thanks for